I'm Crystal Johnson, the Deputy Center Director for Science and Technology at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And here I'm responsible for the research and development portfolio for the center and have made a progressive career that's giving me the opportunity to work at NASA, to do a detail assignment to the White House and work at the White House for two years, and then to be the first African-American Deputy Center Director for any NASA center. As a child, I envisioned myself, my future self, to be an astronaut. We were watching television one day having dinner and I saw the whole Apollo landing thing happen, the, the very, very last piece of it. And I said, I would love to be an astronaut. And my parents looked at me and said, if that's what you want to be, you know you can do it. And they said, you just have to put your mind to it and once you decide, you have to make it happen. And so from that day on, it stuck in my mind. If it's to be, it's up to me. I have to make this so. And then, as I got older, I was accepted as a part of the Lincoln Aerospace Engineering Recruitment Program for college. And there, I had an, an assignment in the physics lab. And I was like, physics? What in the world is physics? I couldn't imagine myself being a physicist because I thought of physicists as nerdy people that were just really smart, but no fashion sense, no people skills, or any of that. So I was like, I can't even imagine how this will be fun. I get in there further, and there's a guy working in, in the laser lab. He has this big white lab coat on with the big sleeves. So he leans over the lab table and he starts adjusting one of the mirrors. First thing I hear is pop, 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 and smoke. And all of a sudden I see that he's put holes in his sleeves because his sleeve got in the way of the beam. And I was like, yes, this is the field for me. You get to put holes in things, shoot lasers across the room. Wonderful, a little bit of danger and a lot of fun. And that's where it started for me, because I got a chance to see the amazing things that the space industry, that NASA does, and the kinds of technologies and things that they do get transferred to industry to improve the quality of life for everyday citizens. I think that it is okay for kids to be smart. It's totally okay, as long as you are true to yourself. I have never been the kind of person that's been just a lab rat. I really am a people person. I like interacting with people. I like talking to people. And so for me, being smart still was not a conflict with my personality. I still got an, an opportunity to interact with the other kids. I wasn't teased for being smart. I made sure I surrounded myself with other smart people. And when it comes to the work that we do as an engineer, we are always looking to do the impossible. We are the ones that have to do the thing that people say can't be done. And so when you look at the weather satellites and when you look at the weather channel, if there were no NASA, you would not know what the weather's gonna be like tomorrow. There are few women in this field for several reasons. And if we talk about girls, few girls in this getting started in the pipeline, that's where it really, really starts. And many times counselors and teachers and everything else will steer and influence the kids. Many of them will steer them towards the softer fields or fields that girls typically do. And so it's very, very important for girls to have the exposure to women who are doing it in these kinds of fields and have exposure, get an opportunity to put hands on in STEM types of activities so that they can see, this is for me too, this is for everyone. Because of the way our system has been, they've had to make a choice between being a caretaker and being someone who focuses on career. But I have found that if you have the right support system around you, then you can have your cake and eat it too. You just have to focus and you have to make up your mind that this is what you want to do and you have to do it. In the very beginning, math and science wasn't really that easy for me. One thing that I realized along the way though is if a teacher explains something to you and you don't really understand, you have to not be afraid to ask questions. If you didn't get it, raise your hand and say, could you explain that a different way? What I found out is they can break it down in very, very simple, basic terms for you. If that happens, then you, you can truly understand it. There's nothing, and I've gone through all of the math and science that you can go through to get to where I am in a PhD. There's no part of math or science that is so difficult that a human can't understand it, that anybody can't understand. It's just a matter of somebody breaking it down in simple terms for you so that you can understand it. One of the beauties of the space industry is we have every kind of job you can ever imagine. We have photographers, we have lawyers, we have accountants, we have engineers, we have doctors. It is the type of thing that if you want to participate in the space industry, there's room for everyone. 
you have to make a choice. You can either choose to hang out with your friends and not do your homework, and you will have fun now for these few years that you're in school, but then you'll have to work hard the rest of your life. Making ends meet barely, working from paycheck to paycheck or whatever else, or you can focus now. You can do the things that give you an opportunity to have whatever kind of career you want to have, and you can enjoy life. You can have the kind of job that gives you the opportunity to travel, make the kind of resources you want to make and everything else, but the choice is yours. This one girl was having a very difficult time. She seemed like she was being discouraged. And so I had an opportunity to just kind of talk. And I it come to find out her parents actually did not want her to go to college. They didn't want her to go into these kinds of STEM fields because they wanted her to work at home and give the money to the family so that she could support the family. But the, she didn't realize that her parents were looking very, very short-sightedly. And I explained to her she could help her family and help the whole you know community that they lived in when she came back home. So she had an opportunity to see that if she focuses now and, and gets her inspiration from the inside and her motivation from the inside, instead of looking for encouragement from her parents, from her other family members, her brothers and sisters, they were not a positive influence and role model for her to follow. She had to look within and she had to look for people out there that were doing this, this kind of thing to encourage her. And also don't be afraid to do things non-traditionally. I love it when people say such and such can't be done. That's when I get excited because I'm happy to prove you wrong. That's what engineers and physicists and scientists do. We look for the impossible. We look for solutions for the impossible. That's where we get innovation from. I would see myself playing a bigger role in global science and technology. In my role at the White House, I had an opportunity to see the small piece of science and technology that NASA does as it compares to the whole. So I would love to be able to play a bigger role in global science and technology in the future. I think that it's very important to be on the continuously learning path. I just finished getting my PhD after years and years of being here at NASA, and my learning will continue even after this. It's, it's one of those things that I kind of feel like if you want to continue to grow, you have to keep learning.